because I didn't have a father, I was very... Um, she was very attached to me. Yeah, yeah, because I was always very afraid to lose her as well. Welcome to the stories of rebirth, where every story marks a new beginning. In this episode, we discover how Lisa raised a tight-knit family of three after a life-changing event when she had to flee from her severely psychotic partner. Raised as a classic hippie child by her mom and stepfather, Lisa's youth was filled with constant traveling. We lived in Singapore, we lived in Malaysia. My parents just took me from school and we went sailing in Greece for six months. Those years were pretty terrific. As a student, Lisa lived across from a vibrant barber shop. She would look at it from her window, not knowing her life was about to change. I remember, you know, opening my curtains and seeing her father actually work. And I was so intrigued by his passion and by, I was just observing this from, from like, it's very creepy actually. I asked if I could have my hair done there. It's very cliche. They fell in love, married and started a family, but her husband's behavior grew increasingly strange due to severe depressions and psychosis. The first time I really thought, okay, now something is going on, is when he got very paranoid. He used to put cloths or towels on pictures because he thought that people were watching us or watching him. I remember that he came home and I could already see in his eyes that he wasn't feeling well. He got very angry actually out of nowhere as if I was planning something against him. He was getting more and more aggressive towards me and I felt that he was going to do something that might cause harm to me and my children. I was really scared. I was, I was like very terrified because I I knew this is not a good place for me and my kids. And then I remember waiting for him to fall asleep. And that is when I grabbed my kids and I left. Yeah. Lisa felt through her maternal instinct that she had to flee. But leaving would mean leaving for good. Mental illness is a sensitive subject yeah. and there's a lot of shame, there's a lot of not understanding, which I found that as a mother very hard to witness for my children. For a year, I grieved very deep, literally with the blankets over my head. I couldn't move. I was just crying and I went through all stages of grief from being angry to being sad to being depressed. I mean, he was sick and, you know, you don't leave a person that is sick. I always felt that, but, but I had to. I know this story, but I can't remember anything. She was always very strong for us. So she never showed us what's going on with her. And when I got older, I was asking more and more. And now I really see what she did for us. What also made us very close. We were really a team at home. Lisa's tendency to be compassionate with others had led to a pattern of forgetting herself in the equation. And then a life-changing moment arrived. I was 32 at the time. That is when I think a new phase of my life started. I read a book by Byron Katie. It's called Loving What Is. And that basically changed my life. That is when I first learned about how to accept what is happening right in this moment without fighting it. And I think that has been a very valuable lesson throughout motherhood. That's also maybe a thing that you never judge us really by the choices we make. Sometimes I have the feeling like, wow, how can you just <laughs> let it be? Because I can imagine that it's really hard for you as well, but it gives me a feeling that I can always tell her everything. I want myself not to be judged. So that is the thing that I strive for in parenthood. I think I also have a different standard for what successful means. Yeah. Like finishing school, studying uh, afterwards, finding a job, getting a house. I know because I've, I've lived it that that is not a measurement for success. It's, it's very different things. It's how compassionate are you for other people? This is what how, I wanted to say actually. Uh, open-minded are you? How loving are you? Those are the things that I try to teach my children and not by saying it to them, but by being an example of it. I hope that's the only thing that I strive for actually as a parent.
Yeah. We have a present for you from me, Omar and Nora. Lisa and Kenza's bond proves that true mother-child relationships are independent of circumstances. The new Lisa acknowledges that there is no such thing as perfect. Because if there's love, what more do you need? She's an uh, example mom, yeah. <laughs> that's a bit too much credit, but no, 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 no that's yeah. true. 